Okay, let's talk level of consciousness. Level of consciousness along with uh, pupillary action are going to be two of your most important components of your neurological exam. This helps not only on a, like a neuro ICU where I work, but this also is very important when working anywhere in a hospital. Being able to assess neurological status appropriately is incredibly important. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the levels of consciousness and we're going to talk about um, the differences and how they apply and everything. So first of all, what you'll notice is, is if you have a patient who's conscious, so what you'll say is you'll say, um, when you start your neurological, neurological report or exam, you'll say ANO times blank, whatever. Okay, that, that's going to be three or four. Okay, that's going to depend on where you work. But basically what we're trying to determine is, does a patient know their name, location, and the date? Sometimes we'll also include situation um, in that. But basically, a person who is conscious um, is able to state those three things. They're awake, they're, able to, they're oriented to, to themselves, the place, the time. Um, you now, if, if they're sleeping and everything like that, you can also give them time. They're, they're able to wake from their sleep and they're able to pay, be alert and pay attention in a wakeful state. So what you'll say is you'll say alert and oriented times three or alert and oriented times four, depending on uh, where you work, if you do uh, four different components of it or three different components of it. But this is the highest level of consciousness, and this is what we're hoping for. This way we want all of our patients to be. Now, right below that, we'll have confused. So people who are confused, they're going to be disoriented, impaired um, in their thinking and in their responses. So this would be a patient who may be ANO times one, ANO times two. Um, they may be confused to the location, they may have time loss, um, and this could be caused by, by sleep deprivation, malnutrition, allergies, environmental pollution, drugs, and infection. But what we're looking for, especially in a hospital setting, is this um, decrease in consciousness due to some sort of neurological pathology. Is this due to a stroke? Is this due to seizure, tumor? Um, is this due, what is this due to? Why are they, are, is the patient septic? Um, again, that would be kind of like an infection. So again, when they're confused, they're disoriented, they may not be able to come up as quickly or at all to their name, the location, and time. And this can absolutely happen. These, these patients can go from a very alert state uh, and a very conscious level of consciousness to confused very quickly. Um, and so it's important uh, to assess that very often. In the neurological ICU, we assess level of consciousness at least every two hours sometimes every one hour, sometimes even more, depending on the patient's condition. From um, confused, we're going to pass on to delirious. <clears throat> delirious patients are going to be very disoriented. They're going to be restless. They may have hallucinations and sometimes delusions. So this may even, you might notice this in like an Alzheimer's patient. They may become delirious at night. You'll have your sundowners. Um, now, but delirious as a level of consciousness uh, means that this is where this person lives. They're restless, they're agitated, um, and, and they're just unable to, to respond to you appropriately. They're awake, but their orientation is, is very askew. Okay. Now from that, we're going to go to somnolent. What's the difference between somnolent and delirious? The biggest difference between somnolent and delirious is that they're sleepy. Okay. But the problem with this is this is an excessive drowsiness. And, and in order to get them to even respond, you have to provide stimuli, okay? And even when they do respond, it might just be mumbles or disorgan disorganized movements. So you, you pinch their, um, their trapezius or their, or their quad and they just, uh, 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 they'll just mumble. They're not going to say words or, or anything like that, but they're incredibly drowsy. They may keep their eyes closed um, and, and it's not possible to even get them to open their eyes. Just recently, uh, in my hospital, we had a patient who was transferred from another floor. The patient was preparing to go home, um, <clears throat> but over there on the other floor, the patient's family noticed that the patient became more somnolent. They were more and more drowsy. They stopped opening their eyes. Uh, so a CT scan was ordered. It was found the patient had dramatic hydrocephalus, um, so much so that, like, say this is the CT scan, this is their, their head, that just a tremendous portion of their of their... Um, head was filled with fluid, okay? Um, so we brought the patient over to our ICU and very rapidly we, we provided interventions. We gave mannitol and we inserted, inserted an EVD 
Uh, and we've talked about that previously. But um, so the somnolence is excessive sleepiness. You're not able to get them up. You have to re- you have to do the sternal rub, um, and that's one thing you'll you'll need to learn in your neurological exams is going to be sternal rub. Uh,